Today I'm here at the scene of the 5K, the local 5K race that I shot last year with Canon EOS R. There's a video about that if you're interested in sports photography or Canon. Uh, but I was back today, uh, yesterday, shooting it with uh, Fuji's. I shot it with a Fuji X-H2S and the X-H2. And so this video is not about the X-H2S, which performed nicely. Uh, with the 50 to 140 millimeter lens, which I rented again. This video is all about the X-H2. So I knew that when I was going to use the X-H2 for a 5K, I was going to keep it in its lane. That's what I learned in my last video where I kind of went on rant on uh, being a little disappointed with the X-H2 and wondering if it was the right camera for me because I like event photography. So I dedicated myself to using it for portraits. So here's some samples of portraits I took of the Metalis. Uh, one of the things I like about this, of course, it was paired with the 56 millimeter lens. And uh, one of the things that that's great for is just blowing out the background, nice soft background. And so I wanted each of the Metalis to kind of be framed with this like historic landmark uh, arts colony sign right here. And so I put that in the background of most of the shots. And so um, one of the things that I might ask myself is, is the quality of these shots the X-H2 or is it the 56 millimeter lens which has an f1.2 aperture, uh, the minimum aperture? And so I really have to question myself on that. But there's more things than that than, that the X-H2 is good for and we're going to talk about them. Okay, so for the event I actually sat up, the, uh, the start line was right there and I sat up in the middle of this intersection which is Gary Avenue. And I was uh, shooting the runners all coming around the corner in high speed continuous burst mode in the X-H2S with the 50 to 140. But I thought to myself, what value could I add to this event with the X-H2? It's just there. So I set up a tripod and I ran video of every runner coming around the first turn. And then when they had all passed, I came, uh, I turned around and I shot coming the other way because the race route has the runners go down around these blocks and they come back here. So both years I've shot this, I've looked at the map and I decided I'm gonna shoot that first turn. Everybody's crowded and kind of packed in and it's hard to get a shot of everybody, but they're separated by the time they come back about a mile in right there. So I have shots of people coming towards the camera but I also ran video there. And I think the 4K HQ, which is oversampled 8K, performed beautifully. I think this was a nice uh, uh, a bit of footage that I could give to the, the race organizers. Okay, I actually just ran into one of the volunteers from the race yesterday. Uh, she's in the group photo, which I'll post here. And one of the things I want to share about that is this was taken with the 56 millimeter. I had enough distance to back up so that I could shoot this whole group of people with the 56 millimeter. And I think it really stands out just the difference between the crispness of the subjects and the background uh, and the resolution. I'm going to say part of that is the X-H2. So really cool. Um, it performed well for those group portraits, those individual portraits, the 4K video. Those are three of the things that it really did well. And now, and now we're gonna talk about what it didn't do well, which is focus. This year I broke up with Canon and I shifted to Fuji for all my professional work and my personal work. Um, so I'm a little disappointed, I'm a little at odds, I'm a little under conflict with the X-H2 that I purchased alongside the X-H2S. Right now I'm at uh, Pomona Colleges, walking around on a Sunday morning. It's very nice here, very nice college. And uh, sculptures here, and actually we started filming on top of those sculptures, so respect for the arts. Makes it a good tripod, disrespectful. Okay, so let me just say this, that I am trying to keep the X-H2 in its lane, so that's portraits, <laughs> a subject matter that is not moving, like landscape, uh, food photography, cocktail photography, but I used it for portraits and I found a couple of areas where it excelled and I'm very happy with it. And then we're going to talk about the downsides, the things that I really am struggling with with the X-H2. So where did the X-H2, where did it struggle uh, was moving subjects. So in the beginning there was a warm-up, there was a local fitness instructor 
and she had taken the stage with two of her uh, colleagues and they were doing this dance kind of Zumba like uh, move to get warmed up and I had the X-H2 with the 56 millimeter lens and I was like let me get these shots wouldn't hit the focus wouldn't hit the focus wouldn't hit the focus and I got a couple and wow when they hit they're amazing but I'd say 60% of the time it failed Similarly, the kids from the cross country team, the local high school, were warming up in the parking lot, and I also shot, missed, shot, missed, shot, missed. I would say I probably missed more than half of those shots. One student, I, he was running towards the camera, and it missed focus, missed focus, missed focus. And then when I used the, whoa, all right, we got the car alarm going on, so uh, we'll reconvene on this at a later time. Oh, 1887. All right, so to pick up where I left off, um, so I was taking the pictures of these fitness instructors, the local cross country students with the 56 millimeter on the X-H2, and it just wasn't hitting focus. Like 60 to 80% of the time it would fail. So I thought, you know, I should put it in manual focus. I actually did that for a shot, but because of the, how many faces there were in the crowd, when I would go to manually focus, I had focus check on, it would zoom in and be so zoomed in, I couldn't tell which face I was trying to focus on and which face, because it would just be like somebody's eye and their hair because the 56 millimeter is like an 85 equivalent. And so the focus check kind of messed me up on that. So manually focusing on like a single person, but for a crowd, it was not, not that helpful. My experience on the X-H2 tracking subjects that are moving is not good not good at all and i hope fuji comes out with a firmware update i believe the xt4 does a better job uh tracking focus uh, although i didn't like the xt4 i had it twice i sold it twice i love this camera i think that the benefits so far are portraits are amazing and uh the video is great and i really think that the um paired with the the 56 millimeter lens it's great um so the the resolution on those group portraits uh, the separation from the background, it really excels there. Now here's the thing, I used the Canon EOS R last year, <clears throat> full frame, 30 megapixels. Okay, plane, it's foggy. I can't see you, but I hear you. It's a noisy little campus. So last year I used the EOS R and I thought, maybe if I'm not happy with the X-H2, do I just sell that and go back to the R? But the X-H2 has stabilization it has 8k video there are things about it that i really like it's not that far a price point from the eos r a couple hundred dollars um so uh i'm torn one of the things i can do is compare the portraits i took of the medalist from last year with the canon eos r to the xh2 portraits i took this year and so i'm going to put them up here and so you can see um, one of the things that i think the canon did not do as well one of the reasons i'm happy i switched to fuji is the skin tones um, I just, uh, the skin tones of the Fuji are straight out of the camera and I know I post-processed these and created some special uh, presets. So you can see for yourself, maybe you can say what you prefer, but I did use Nostalgic Neg on these which has a slight warmer tone to it that I prefer. Now in the beginning of the event I did shoot, I had my white balance a little bit off and so I was able to adjust those because uh, I shot raw and JPEG for the event and so that's why you would shoot raw is just you know something like that it's easy to correct so here's some quick comparisons of the portraits I prefer the Fuji let me know in the comments which you prefer I'm definitely torn and I feel like the X-H2 had more expectations of it the X-H2S is way outperforming it and I'm still not sure if the resolution is such a big deal that I need to have the X-H2. Anyways, that's just me and uh, I will be continuing to test this. Please let me know what your comments are, uh, your questions in the comments so that I can respond. That's been so helpful to have people chime in and ask questions. You're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first one to tell you that. So that's your assignment for this video is just leave me a question or comment. You can like and subscribe and all that, but leave me a question or comment about the X-H2. What do you want to know? What do you hope to know? I will see you in the next video. Daisy! Daisy! Oh, oh, oh! Daisy! Oh, 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 oh! I got a Zika fly. Thanks, I'll see you in the next video.